Food security is an access by all people at all times to adequate nutritious food to lead a healthy and productive life. The right to a standard of living for health and well-being, including food, is recognized in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Food and nutrition security is therefore a fundamental objective of development policy for all countries. World Food Day is celebrated every year on October 16th to commemorate the founding of the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, or FAO, in 1945, and at the same time promote worldwide awareness and action for those who suffer from hunger and for the need to ensure food and nutrition security for all. This year's World Food Day is being commemorated under the team Grow, Nourish and Sustain together. Our actions are our future. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends, the World Food Day found its origin in the birthday of FLUI on 16th October 1945. World Food Day 2020 aligns with the spirit of FAO's 75th commemoration as countries around the world deal with the widespread effects of COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this year's World Food Day is a bit unique in the sense that we are in an era of um, COVID-19 which came with all its associated um, issues affecting all the sectors of the economy including agriculture which has not been spared. Um, in terms of access to food, the availability, movement restrictions, this impacted on the food sector quite a lot as well. So this team was carefully chosen, given that it talks about Norris is being able to have food systems that can produce variety of food to nourish the growing population that we have, and doing this within a sustainable environment to sustain the planet. And doing this together means everyone has a role to play. Countries have a role to play, private sector has a role to play, individuals even have a role to play. So in this regard, going forward, as part of um, the COVID-19 response strategy of many countries, this offers an opportunity for countries to now look into means and ways of having resilient food systems that will be able to withstand any shock of this nature going forward in the future. On this occasion, the World Food Day is calling for global solidarity to help all populations, and especially the most vulnerable, to recover from health crisis and to make food systems more resilient and robust so that they can withstand increasing volatility and climate shocks, deliver affordable and sustainable healthy diets for all and decent livelihoods for food system workers. Here in Eritrea, the World Food Day is celebrated every year in a manner that portrays the true image of Eritrea's endeavors to ensure food and nutrition security at a national level. Accordingly, a number of programs are organized every year in different corners of the country, including in the capital Asmara, the National Agricultural Research Center, the Hamel Malo Agricultural College, as well as in Mbadurho, among others. Despite this, however, this year's World Food Day is being celebrated virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic in respect to the guidelines issued by the government.
Ensuring food and nutrition security at national and household levels is one of the top national priorities of the Eritrean government, the cornerstone for sustainable economic growth and poverty eradication. In this regard, the policy of the government is to transform traditional farming system into a modern commercial farming system and develop market-lead economy supported by a comprehensive array of government-provided services, including research and extension, regulatory and advisory services, as well as training and education. The policy as a sector uh, is very clear. Uh, we have seen agriculture, its growth over a period of time. We, we were always talking about production and productivity. The productivity has to increase if production is to increase. We're not only talking about so many quintals, but the productivity rate has to increase. Uh, and the policy is also trying to change, transform the agricultural system. We have the traditional system that has to change to match the needs of transforming this production and productivity. If you wanted to change the traditional system, you have to introduce technologies, technologies that are appropriate that farmers can use. The Eritrean government has been implementing several strategic interventions focusing on combating desertification, soil and water conservation, building up climate resilient agriculture aimed at improving crops and livestock output. Some among the many indispensable interventions that contribute towards food and nutrition security and promote the production of nutritious agricultural produce are the introduction of agricultural technologies and the implementation of climate resilient minimum integrated household agricultural package or MIHAB. Such interventions have enabled the direct and indirect beneficiaries of the MIHAB to meet their nutritional requirements, generate income and lead a healthy lifestyle. Some among the many indispensable, we say, interventions that contribute towards food security and promote production and uh, of nutritious agricultural uh, produce, that's what I said, nutritious, nutrition sensitive agriculture, is a program that the ministry introduced as uh, a minimum integrated household agricultural package, which means then you go into the farms, contact farmers, uh, of course, there is a need of water. You give them uh, land for a uh, tree for their fruit, uh, uh, trees for their vegetation, uh, uh, and uh, that's uh, the forage for their cattle. And then introduce also different kinds of vegetables. So you have vegetables and fruits in the village itself, a milk production. This has been very uh, uh, successful program in small villages. It is envisaged that this package will provide sufficient food and nutrition for the participating farm household, as well as sufficient supplies for other families. So far, over 200 farming households in five sub-regions of the Ansabar region, up to 200 beneficiaries in the Galanafhi sub-region of the region have benefited from the MIHAB. <laughs> Uh, 
a number of chickens were distributed to farmers in various villages of the country. Distributing thousands of well-equipped modern beehives were among the other developments incorporated with the policy in efforts to ensure food security. This pilot project has already played a big role in improving the livelihoods of its beneficiaries. If this is scaled up, it will take care of the problems of tens of thousands of Eritrean rural families. The government of Eritrea has established agricultural research centers in different agroecological zones, referring to highland and lowland temperatures. The Halhala Agricultural Research Center, for instance, represents the highland, Golij the western lowland, and Shi'ab the eastern lowland. In this research center, different laboratories were established regarding tissue culture, soil texture, plants production, gene bank, seed tests, afforestation, and many others that are projected mainly for animal food. The food and nutrition security in Eritrea has been the priority. Hence, agro-macro policy was devised. Irrigation-based agriculture was introduced to increase output and create surplus in cereal crops, vegetables, fruits and livestock. Soil and water conservation is a preliminary, mandatory and prime measure of maintaining soil health and fertility. Hence, soil and water conservation is the cornerstone for maintaining the sustainability of agricultural production and productivity. Documents indicate that 60,000 hectares of land is under irrigation in the country, which is bearing fruitful outcome. Okay, uh, there is a lot of soil and water conservation programs in, uh, within the ministry itself. And then uh, a lot of uh, hectares have been irrigated. But then if you are irrigating, it means like uh, when there is no rain, you're, you're solving a lot of problems through irrigation. We're talking about every raindrop should be conserved also. With careful methods of mechanisms in the agricultural sector, Eritrea has scored impressive development accomplishments with reference to food and nutrition security, thereby reactivating integrated national action programs and harnessing human and material capacities over the past 29 years of independence. As a result of concerted endeavors, large, medium and small scale water harvesting structures water diversion schemes and embankments constructed throughout the nation, clearing up and land leveling activities in select areas and the undertaking of irrigation systems have all given rise to extensive and yet modern agro-industry. Eritrea's success in the agricultural sector is largely due to the government's relentless efforts in creating a number of strategic dams, handles of micron dams and medium dams, as well as many diversion schemes throughout the country, investing tens of millions in modern agricultural equipment and introducing modern farming techniques such as the indigenous drip irrigation system, which has given many Eritrean farmers the ability of having many farming seasons in one year. The imported heavy machineries in Eritrea attest to the government's commitment and determination towards fulfilling the food security strategy nationwide. 
Those machineries are playing a key role in speeding up the ongoing agriculture and development programs in the country. Eritrea's coastline on the Red Sea is approximately 1,200 kilometers, making it one of the longest in the world, with approximately 1,000 kilometers more coming from its numerous islands on the Red Sea. The Eritrean marine resources are vastly distributed within the long coast and below the beautifully and carefully preserved sea. Over 1,000 different species of fish and 250 types of corals are found in the Red Sea. We see fisheries in the concept of, uh, of nutrition, food and nutrition, because it's not only agriculture that's the supplier. Food per se. Now, to the ordinary people, uh, we talk about improving the nutrition concept, variety, diversification. Also in the uh, World Food Day, we talk about diversification of food. Diversification means the resource that you have. You don't eat the same thing every day. You could also be eating uh, junk food, huh? which is not nutritious. And then you will end up uh, getting more problems like obesity and the like. And to, uh, to go into the, the details, so to say, we do a lot of our awareness programs to instruct people to diversify their food resources per se. And fish is one of the main resources. And Etra is also endowed with a variety of uh, fish and both in terms of amount and, uh, and quality of fish. A huge amount of fish well, if we have the capacity to fish and produce it to the market. Fish product is an important source of animal protein, an essential micronutrient for balanced nutrition and good health. It also holds the potential to be a significant export industry and thus contribute to overall development and growth of the country. Despite successful achievements in food and security programs, Eritrea, among other East African countries, has been hit by unprecedented desert locust invasion in 25 years. Unfortunately, Eritrea happens to lie um, as one of the frontline states of this desert locust infest infestation. Beside that, uh, unfortunately also it has two breeding grounds. So beside um, infestation coming from neighboring countries as well, which makes it um, a country that needs to pay much attention to this desert locust, locust outbreak. Fortunately, with so many years of experience that Eritrea has compared to other countries in the region who are just experiencing it in the last many, many, many years, Eritrea, you are so much uh, familiar with this and also with the ministry's support they have various control stations dotted across the country for controlling this whenever they, I mean, they, they, there's any incident. So with the recent ones um, I can say with the Ministry of Agriculture their technical expertise and level of effort and resources together with that of FAO and FAO expertise as well we are able to predict and then work closely with the ministry to prepare to control should there be an outbreak that is expected. In the past, we've done so well with the ministry in doing that, and we continue to do the same. Eritrea's approach in controlling the infestation is largely based on prevention, involving advanced planning, regular monitoring, immediate intervention, and the provision of staff training. Locusts have been handled and we're very successful in Eritrea um, because we have our neighbors and locusts know no borders. They don't need any visa. They fly overnight all the way from Yemen to Eritrea, all the way from Pakistan, India to Ethiopia, Eritrea, and across the region, Somalia. Uh, it's in vast quantities across the region, all the way down to Kenya, Uganda, uh, and South Sudan, Sudan itself. 
and, and Eritrea is not an exception. We have uh, units here all along the coast, the breeding centers, uh, and, uh, and then it's well organized as a, uh, as a unit. So far, we've been able to manage the pest plus the desert locust controls in Eritrea. Eritrea controlled the recent outbreak successfully with insignificant crop damage. The achieved success in controlling the infestation is a vivid demonstration of the government's commitment towards boosting confidence amongst the farming communities and thus ensures a reliable and sustainable food and nutrition security at a national level. History indicates that every year has its own challenges and opportunities. The world is amid of the disastrous COVID-19 period. In moments like this, it's more important than ever to recognize the need to support the food heroes, farmers and workers through the food system who are making sure that food makes its way from farm to fork, even amid disruptions as unprecedented as the current COVID-19 period. This year's World Food Day is the for a day that calls on our perseverance and resilience, built up systems built together with the support of all development partners, enable us to strengthen our coping mechanisms, face any challenge and come up with success and gear forward to achieve our goals and visions.